This is your reminder that the BBC has yet to address the consistent transphobic leanings in its news coverage. And while the team behind Doctor Who is not connected to this in any way, since this is a BBC-owned property, I'm going to keep pointing it out until the problem gets resolved. Links in a pinned comment below if you don't know what I'm talking about. I'll stop saying it when it stops being a problem. It's Easter Sunday, and apparently I missed the memo that there was going to be another Doctor Who trailer today. I really didn't know. Apparently, from what I can tell, people are telling me that uh, there was some kind of announcement or, like, they knew it was coming. I didn't. I didn't. I thought it was going to have a genuinely relaxed day with, like, nothing that I had to do today. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, that's enough of my problems, though. Uh, we're going to do another trailer reaction, and I'll do it like I did the last one, which means it will go on the main channel, and it'll have me pausing and giving reactions as I go. Um, I am slightly nervous about this one. I didn't get any copyright crap from the last one, but the last one also went up on Disney Plus's official YouTube channel as well as the Doctor Who-related stuff. This one's only gone up in Doctor Who and the BBC, and they tend to be squirrelier, so it makes me nervous to try this. We're going to try it anyway. We'll see what we get. But in any case, a uh, quick reminder, I did like the previous trailer. The The butterfly effect joke uh, hit me bad, not in and of itself, but I'm just worried about what it might imply. I'm not feeling as negative about that as I was in that video. People have suggested things like, you know, uh, there's going to be more leaning into superstition or supernatural elements sort of in the wake of the uh, toy maker and like, I... I can roll with that. I honestly don't think Doctor Who needed to justify that kind of thing to do it, but that's a whole other conversation. But with that in mind, I'm a slightly more open to it, or at least waiting to see what the context is on it. In any case, we've got this trailer to get through, so <sighs> let's see what we got. You ready for this? We'll see. <laughs> Avengers Tower still. Give me the loving. Okay. Now, stay back. We are going to walk through time. Ooh. Okay. A lot of it, this is footage that we saw in the first one already, but I, I, I'm liking that weightless moment in the TARDIS. Um, I also like kind of the, the on the beat thing. This has got in the, in the underlying beat to it. I don't remember that being anything that was noticeable in the previous trailer. If it was, it didn't stick with me here. Like having stuff hit on the beat. I don't know. Kind of like it. Kind of dig that. All right. City in a bubble. Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, this is so Richardson. Okay. So there was Jonathan Groff and there's, oh boy, there's a lot of speculation around him as there is literally every single time a major known um, actor Appears in Doctor Who, there's always a ton of speculation about, ooh, I bet maybe it's the new incarnation of the Master. Maybe it's, I'm hearing people say that, like, they're recasting Jack Harkness with Jonathan Groff. Like, I think he's just going to be a character in that episode. Like, I, I, I really do. Because the fan base does this every time. And yes, sometimes they actually turn out to be somebody. That's pretty rare, though. More often than not, big names make one episode appearances. That's just what they do. So, yeah, I, I'm not going to go into speculation on that. That rapid fire stuff, I'm sure there are other uh, reviewers who have gone frame by frame in that. I'm not that kind of person. But uh, I did like that that knowing look that the doctor gave him. I'm not going to read into it. I'm deliberately choosing not to read into it. But I just, I like the energy Gatwa is bringing. I continue to really like, every time he's on the screen, I'm like, oh. Oh, I want more of you. This is Ruby. You are wild, brave, and rude. No, 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 <laughs> Where shall we go? Oh, okay. Like, that's a fun look. And, and Doctor Who, I don't want it to overdo it with the dressing for the time period, but let's be honest, when it does it, it's usually pretty fun. Like, I think it's one of the few nice things I have to say about the It's Lantern. Um, or uh, it's one of the things that I also find quite enjoyable about Thin Ice, which is a 
great episode as opposed to an awful one like Gideon's Lantern is, but that's a separate rant. I've done it before. We'll move on. Anywhere. It's you. Space baby. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> It's not as big of a shock as it might have been otherwise, because I did see that some of the titles for some of the episodes dropped, and that the first one that RTD wrote is Space Babies. So, I didn't know how literal that was going to be. This literal, apparently. Hey folks, it's me from the editing phase. Well, it turns out they actually have announced all of the episode titles, and I'm not going to do a separate video on it. I don't have enough thoughts. I do think it was pretty neat that they did sort of these kind of almost mini trailers over on Twitter. And extra interesting in regards to this one specifically, it has a horror tone to it, which I wouldn't have called. I don't really have any thoughts on the trailers or what the titles were. It seems to largely just confirm what kind of thing is in each episode. But I'll tell you what, they're making good use of that Disney marketing money. All right, back to it. Oh, okay. So we're going, uh, we're going, uh, camp early on. Uh, that leans into my concerns of RTD bringing back kind of the, the series one energy, which felt wonky to me, uh, by the time I got around to watching it. I didn't watch it when it aired. I, I was watching as it aired around series four, but I don't know. It could still work. And like, reminder, I had massive misgivings about the um, 60th anniversary specials with Tennant and uh, Tate, and I ended up really, really liking them. Like, a lot more than other people, it seems like. It seems like some people are, like, starting to sour on them. I still think they're great. So, like, me being concerned doesn't mean I won't like it. It definitely doesn't mean I won't watch it. Reminder, because some people are like, oh, you're always concerned. Like, that's me. That's my brain. I get worried and nervous about things. I'm still capable of enjoying it. I'm not one of those joyless pundits. I I had like five words flash in my head and none of them were appropriate to say. So anyway. Oh, is it the right yes, it is. Is it safe? It's never safe. Listen to me. Be boring, but safe. This is what we're trying to stop. All of life extinguished. You keep us safe? Eh? I will keep us safe. Mm. Ooh. Come on. We've got work to do. That's like, that's what I'm talking about with that knowing grin. It's not just that he's grinning. It's like he knows. It's not even that he knows something you don't. It's like he knows 10 things you don't in that one second that he's smiling. That's great energy for the doctor. I'm, I'm so excited for him. There's a storm coming in. Okay, so Jinx Monsoon. Reminder, despite being a burlesque performer who occasionally does do shows with drag queens in them, uh, I have not done uh, what I consider to be drag performance in... Oh, jeez. Well over a day. It's got to it's be close to 15 years now. Um, I, I really have just kind of moved past, um, drag just, and that's not to denigrate drag. Drag is great. Drag is amazing. I know some amazing drag queens. It's not really my thing. So I have no investment in Jinx Monsoon. I didn't really know her, uh, prior to this. I should check pronouns. I'm using her. I don't know if that's, because obviously when performing and in queen mode, generally you go with... She, her, that doesn't necessarily mean the performer actually goes by that. Uh, trying to check, trying to check, trying to check. Um, I'm seeing a whole lot of avoiding pronouns altogether. Uh, oh, there's some hers. I'm seeing, okay, I'm going to go with her. If I'm wrong, I'll get corrected and fans will, of her stuff will yell at me, I'm sure. I do like the fishnet arm stuff. Like, it's very um, early 2000s proto-goth, which I've seen on a lot of queens. Oh, honey, the lip sneer was nice. For. I will shatter this silly little battlefield into dust. Ooh. Ooh, the intimidation. That's always nice, too. Like, the doctor should be able to intimidate, uh, in my opinion. And... Ooh, that's a good look. I don't necessarily mean the it's it's a basic white t-shirt. I mean the look on his face. That's ooh, that's good. In a heartbeat. 
into dust. Ooh, I'm ready to see him get intense. I don't have a people, I don't have a home, but I have freedom. Catch your monsters getting into scrapes. So I can okay, being wrapped up in music, I'm assuming this is tied to Jinx Monsoon because when her look was first revealed, um in some still images there was like a music note motif i think it was like on the collar of her jacket or something so i'm assuming that's part of that we saw jonathan groff with a laser gun so he appears to be anachronistic and out of time i'm not going to do a lot of speculation it's not really my thing i'm just noting these things as i go i do like that look of wonder that ruby had that <gasps> like that's one of the things the companion should bring in my mind is that sense of wonder because the doctor has not seen it all when when it's implied the doctor has seen it all that ticks me off the universe is too big for him to ever see it all, but he has seen a lot. So that sense of awe really ideally should be channeled through the companion more often than not. Um, so uh, that she did that look really well when it came up. Keep moving on to see the next thing and the next and the next. Effects, oh, Have you ever... okay, we're definitely getting more singing. <laughs> That's, that, that, okay. And this too, this is look, this looks like a still out of full on musical number. I think it's been predicted for a while now from fans. And I don't think it, it's been confirmed that Jinx Monsoon is going to be in a musical episode. Cause like with the musical note motif and like I, it, the outfit that Ruby was in when she was being wrapped in the music notes, that I think was the outfit that she had in that little bit where they're crossing Abbey Road or at least paying homage to it. I don't know if it was the same crosswalk. Um, I'm going to assume it was. Um, so, you know, all that stuff. And like this, that I'm now assuming that's going to be a musical episode, which some fans have wanted from Doctor Who for a while. I have been neutral on it. I generally am on musical episodes. Even the good ones, not very many of them have stuck with me all that well. Uh, and they're not always good. <laughs> but anyway. And that's just the beginning. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. So I like this trailer better. Oh, wait, we, we got to hear him do the thing. Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel. He had to do the thing. You got to have him do the thing. Um, so yeah, I, I like this one better. Not by like a wide, wide margin, but the, the previous one did have like that one thing that made me go like, Arr! and even this, while there, there were a few things that I kind of like jabbered on about for a little bit, I nothing made me go like, oh, that makes me genuinely nervous. None of that happened. So I'm, yeah, this is helping. These trailers, this one especially, are actually helping because... I have had jitters and nerves, honestly, ever since RTD was announced to be coming in, just because I, I worry about not just this franchise, but literally any franchise, getting uh, too insular, too backwards looking. It, it, it After a while, it just becomes masturbatory. And I worry about that for Doctor Who for the same reason that I haven't rushed out to see the new Ghostbusters movie. Ghostbusters Afterlife was a nice hit of nostalgia that I appreciated, but I wanted it to then move forward from there, and the new one looks even more drowned uh, in nostalgia than the previous one did, and so I'm like, I'll wait for streaming. So whenever any franchise just becomes about looking back and trying to recapture old glory, it worries me. And I have been worried about that for Doctor Who ever since RTD was announced. Now, some things that I'm worried about have not panned out. As I said, the David Tennant specials, I like them a lot, including the Bi Generation, which is, I, oh, am I gonna have to do a separate thing on why I think the Bi Generation is good and a lot of the arguments I hear against it don't make sense to me? Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like I kind of said my piece about it when I reviewed the giggle. Uh, check th that side. Uh, check that out if you haven't seen seen it already. But then again, I didn't get, like respond to criticisms because they weren't really, because I, I shoot my reviews before I see what anybody else is saying. I don't know. Would anyone be interested in that? Because like, it seems like there's a handful of solidified arguments against by generation or issues that people say they have that most of which I tilt my head at and go, 
what? Uh, they, they don't make sense to me. Um, and it, But anyways, I don't know if that's something worth doing or not. Let me know. Uh, <laughs> in any case, I, me bringing up liking the David Tennant specials a lot is, again, me reminding you that me being skeptical does not mean I'm a, I'm a killjoy. I can have great fun with these things. I have had great fun. I didn't like Church on Ruby Road as much, but that honestly had a lot more to do with the fact that it fit the standard light and fluffy tone of the, um, you know, almost uh, pantomime taking excuse from that kind of tradition over in the UK feel to it that I just generally don't like. I don't like most of the Christmas specials all that much. Not that I think they're bad. They're just not what I come to Doctor Who for. And yeah, Church on Ruby Road kind of had some of that going on. So me not liking it that much, I don't take as any kind of ill omen because I don't like most of the Christmas specials because of the tone they opt to set. So uh, I I am still coming into this with a decent amount of hope. As much as I know, there are going to be things that annoy me, like RTD bringing back the mystery box storytelling and Murray Gold again. Murray Gold's fine. I'm just sick of his bombastic music and bringing back Moffat again makes me worried that we're just reassembling the old team rather than building a new one that can carry it forward when RTD invariably moves on to do something else. I don't want this franchise to start to feel like it only works when the people who have already done it are doing it again. I'm not really going to say the Chibnall era worked that well. It didn't. But I am going to say that I, for the, for the health of the franchise, I am more worried about creating uh, an image that only the old uh, writers can make it work over rolling the dice on somebody new. And actually, somebody could even argue that Chibnall was a pick of the old writers because he'd been writing for the show since uh, since earlier episodes. So, But anyways, this has become a whole other tangent. Good trailer. I like it. What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills. Enables me to do this as my living. Even if you can't help me out that way, like, share, subscribe. Those all help me out as well. Don't worry too much about it, though. What I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful. You are valid. You are loved. You are the council, and I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. Time for me to thank my highest supporting patrons, Robin Moore, Zubin Mutfula, Goddess Elida, Oliver B, to rock the thing that goes doink in the anime, Ruth, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Loki Eris, that was a new one, that's why I paused, uh, Melinda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Fernabi Likes Poodle, Robin Powell, Twisted Wishes, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casper, Dave Hall, Quite Bearish, Rosalind Bennett, <laughs> Pau Barabajagal, and Mary G. <laughs> if, if you want to support me as well and help keep these little buggers fed, um, check out my Patreon. Thanks so much. <laughs>